Now, you are a diocesan priest, and then there is religious orders, and some religious members of religious orders are priests, some some are not. Mm -hmm. Can you briefly explain what that difference is? Yeah, so a diocesan, uh, you know, priest, and I get asked this all the time, you know, what order do you belong to? Well, I'm, I'm a diocesan priest. So that is the order that goes all the way back to Jesus Christ and setting up the apostolic church. And then the successors of the apostles are the ones that have governance over particular regions. We are the the work, you know, the work staff, you know, the the guys in the trenches, the 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 soldiers in the trenches uh, that do that work, you know, of of parish priests being a regular parish priest. Now they're from the diocesan priesthood that was established by Jesus Christ through the succession of the apostles. There are men and women throughout history who live remarkable holiness and their charismatic gifts, their their chrismation in the power of the Holy Spirit guided them with very specific gifts to rebuild the church in very unique ways throughout the history of the church. So you have the beginnings of religious orders cropping up in the early fourth century yeah. all the way through to present day. There are mm-hmm. religious communities that are that are being inspired in the hearts of men and women. And, and these communities are helping the process of rebuilding the church. So it goes hand in hand between diocesan priesthood, parish priests, as well as the religious priests and sisters that really do this beautiful work. That's a really good uh, explanation. Mm-hmm. Thank so you. your obedience and is to the bishop, yes. right? Whereas a religious order, their obedience and their vow would be to their regular, yep. right? Yep. Their Which superior their regular. superior yep. regular. So some of the famous religious, Catholic religious orders, and there's a distinction between orders and congregations and institutes. Prelatures. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But orders... In a general sense, and we'll explain the distinction later, but, you know, you have the Jesuits, you have the Franciscans, you have the Benedictines, the Augustinians, the Dominicans, the Mercedarians, right? Then you have the Norbertines, the Norbertines and the Congregation of the Holy Cross and the Sisters of Notre Dame and, you know... Carthusians. Carthusians and the Trappists. And, <laughs> yep, the Trappists. You have right? to Trappist, recommend. Oh, the yeah. beer. Come on. <laughs> uh, and, and, and the Carmelites. And there, there, there's so many of them, right? Hundreds. Hundreds. Now, what about the coffee beans? I need some of the brothers. <laughs> what the about the beans? Mystic Monk coffee beans? <laughs> I drink that every morning. That's good stuff. So, you know, there's all these different ones, and they all have founders. And we'll try to get into a few of the big ones and explain the differences. But I think why... Do we have religious orders in the church? What what led to the reason that you have particular groups of people who act and dress and worship in a particular way that's as a community? You know, and mm-hmm. I think you brought it up in like the fourth century. Like the first religious orders are the Augustinians and the Benedictines, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they really came of they came around from having a common either rule or way of prayer or a regiment of prayer where they lived communally and then they started developing a particular lifestyle. Now, these lifestyles in all of these religious orders are what's generally known as charisms, right? And a charism is essentially the character and the style of what they do, but there's a lot deeper meaning.